Hey guys, welcome to Code Decode. Today in this video, we are going to cover some very frequently asked REST API interview questions. But this video is going to target a very practical examples of REST API implementations. And usually interviewers ask this to check your practical knowledge. So it's very easy to learn how to create a REST API. What is the difference between the get, put, post, delete APIs. But in this video, we are going to cover some very specific scenario based questions. So let's get started. Please like, share and subscribe to support us. And we are setting a like target of 500 likes. Suppose there is one functionality that get all employee list. We will create a REST API. We'll create a service layer and a repository layer. Now, how will you share this particular REST API contract with your front end team who, who is actually responsible to integrate with your back end that you have created and show that employee list in a tabular format on the front end? How will you share this API contract with the front end team? Or there is one more microservice which wants to consume your REST API. How will you share this contract with another microservice team who wants to use your functionality that you have implemented in your REST API? So let's first see how we have done the CRUD operations. So this was the example of CRUD operation we have seen. We had a controller. In this controller, we have created four to five REST APIs. Now, if front end comes and asks me, okay, great, you have implemented everything. Now, give me a REST API which will be able to show a list of all the employees present in your current database. You will ask them to hit this particular REST API because this is capable enough to hit the database, fetch all the list of all employees and then the front end person will integrate with this API and show this all the list in the tabular format. How will you share this REST API? How will you tell your front end team that use this particular API? You can just share the contract which will contain which particular HTTP verb you are using get post put or delete you will create the url like http colon slash slash localhost colon 8080 slash your rest controller mapping that is slash code get mapping that is slash all and you will see if you hit this particular url with the get verb you will be able to fetch all the list of all the employees present here but is this the right way? Answer is no. You have supposed shared one API. Now the person comes and says, okay, I think this is, there is some headers which is missing. There can be authorization with that, which is going to be auth0, auth1 or basic authentication or bureau token authentication, API key authentication. We don't understand anything with this URL. So this is a very bad way of sharing your APIs with the front end team. The, another microservice back end team wants to access your APIs. So what is the second way? The second elegant way of sharing your REST APIs with the other team members, you can share the curl. Now, how will you share the curl? So in this postman, if you can go here with the code, you can see this is the curl, which says location, the request, this is the work that is get, this is the URL. And if you had some headers like accept application slash JSON, this header keeps on appending here. As, as soon as you keep on adding your key value pairs, your curl gets updated. The very efficient way of sharing a URL with the verb and the headers and the authentication mechanism is through sharing this curl, which you will get from here in the postman. You can change this HTTP localhost to the server name. So there can be the dev server or the QA server that you want to add. Wherever your code is deployed, just share the server name here and share this curl to the front end team but again i will not suggest you to do that also though it is a beautiful format of sharing the api the best practice is to implement the swagger and configure in such a way that as soon as you start your server the apis will automatically get documented in swagger ui what is swagger in a one-liner definition you can say it's a documentation for your api designs as your projects grow with the time, the number of REST endpoints to fulfill the new functionalities will also increase. And so does the headache of maintaining your API documentations. Now, if there are hundreds of APIs, are you going to get the curl whenever they want? If you have modified some contract in the API, are you always going to find the curl in the postman and share it with the UI people? It's a pain. It's a headache. You will, you will not like it after some time. So to keep it manageable, as the project grows, the Swagger implementation is important in your project. Swagger tool takes the hard work to generating and maintaining your API documentations and ensure that your documentation stays up to date as your API evolves. So there, initially, when we develop an API, multiple times there can be a chances that API is created, keeping some inputs in mind. Now, suppose as the time grows, your inputs increases to the API. So 
are you going to modify the API and let the front end and 10 hundreds of the other microservices who are going to use your API? And how will you make them know? So you just shoot an email, tell them that the API has changed and please take a reference from the Swagger API. If you have an existing project who doesn't have Swagger implementation, but now since it's growing uh, day by day, you want to implement Swagger to keep it maintainable. So is it allowed for the existing APIs to be able to be documented in Swagger? which is pre-created uh, before the Swagger implementation? The answer is yes. Documentation can be automated generated for the APIs who are already created. And for the new APIs, as soon as you start your server, the new APIs will be automatically generated in the Swagger. So, and uh, the best part is you can maintain multiple versions of your APIs too. So, whenever you go from version 1 to version 2, you have to give backward compatibility to the existing old users who are not going to move from the old version to new version as soon as you are upgrading your versions. So, you have to give the backward compatibility for users also. So, in that purpose also, Swagger gives you the way to maintain your multiple versions of the same REST API. So, that is why we support Swagger's that. Now, what is Swagger UI? Until unless you don't see it, you won't understand it. So let's go ahead and do it in a demo. This was the CRUD API. We have created a video with the CRUD operation already. I'm going to just clone it and implement the Swagger in the existing API. And I'm going to name it as Swagger implementation. And with just simple three steps, you will be able to convert your existing application into an automatically documented Swagger implemented project. So let's see how to do that. Now our project is copied. This is the new project with the CRUD operations. Here we have the add REST API, get all REST API, fetch only single employee with the ID, delete employee and update employee. So five type of REST API is already there. Now this is the case where we have a CRUD already implemented and now we have to implement Swagger and we want all these five APIs to be documented in Swagger. And just in three simple steps, we'll be able to move our application from non-Swagger implemented application to a Swagger implemented one. The very first thing in a Maven project, we need Swagger in place. So where do you add add all the dependencies in Spring Boot project? Do we add it to build path? No, we don't do that since we have man mavenized our application. In a maven application, we have a pom.xml. In that XML, we can go ahead and add the pom dependencies for Swagger. Great. So here we have implemented two dependencies. The first is a Spring Funk Swagger 2. This is for the backend part. This contains the set of jars which will make your application Swagger enabled so that all your APIs will be able to be added to the Swagger UI. But for the front end or the UI purpose, we need to add one more dependency that is Spring Fox Swagger UI. And that will give you a good UI which you can share with your front end team members or your other microservice team members. All the jars in these two dependencies are capable enough to make your project Swagger enabled. So the first step is to add the dependencies in the pom.xml for the Spring Fox Swagger 2. You need some configurations so that you can implement your REST controllers APIs to your Swagger UI. For that, you need some configurations. So the similar way we have done for the spring security, uh, just by adding a spring security uh, jar is not enough. It will give you a basic login page, but we need many more kinds of authentication, authorization, configurations. So for that, we used to have one uh, spring security configuration class. Similarly, we need one configuration class for Swagger also. So after adding the dependencies, the next thing you have to do is to implement your Swagger configurations. I'll create a new package named as com.codedecode.demo.swagger. All my sw Swagger specific files I'm going to create in this particular package. But thankfully for Swagger implementation, only one single configuration class is needed. So I'll name it as Swagger config. The best part to make our life easy in Spring Boot is they have given us many kind of annotations. And one single annotation is capable enough to make the Swagger class, first of all, a bean that is to be scanned and given to the IOC. And secondly, a Swagger 2 enabled class. So to make it a bean and second, enabled Swagger 2. So you can see this is a Spring Fox documentation, Swagger 2 annotation. So its documentation itself screams and says, please do not use me alone. Use me with annotation which makes your class scannable by IOC container. So that is why we need this particular component before using Enable Swagger 2. With this in place, we are good to configure our Swagger configurations. Let's create a bean first. For the bean, we have at the rate bean. Then we have a method which returns you a docket. Now docket is a web plugin. So I'm going to return a bean of type docket and my method name will be get docket. Now with this, this method returns you a docket bean and now you are going to configure your docket. Docket is a basic primary configuration 
configuration object of Swagger with the, all your basic configurations that you need to do in your Swagger implementation has to be done through this docket object. So this is a builder which is intended to be a primary interface for your Swagger implementation framework and it provides you some sensible methods for your basic configuration of Swagger implementation. So until unless you do not have docket, you will not be able to do the basic configurations of your Swagger. Now, since you have to return a docket, I'm going to return new docket. It takes documentation type, Swagger 2. Next thing is many, many functions we have here. Like we have select, we have, we have API information, API description. But the important thing that we're going to use here is group name. All the APIs which I have here are public APIs. I'm not going to keep anything private. So I'm going to name it as public APIs. So this is the way to group all your APIs into different groups like private APIs, business APIs, admin specific APIs in different groups so that it is manageable for you. Secondly, which I'm going to use is API information. We need API information builder. I'm going to create a method here rather. Get API info. So I'm going to create a method called as public named as API info and the return type will be API information. You can create API information from API information builder with a new keyword. Now it has many options. Now what is API information builder? I'll show you quickly. This is the information of your APIs. So the API will contain a title, description, license, version, many more things. So let's implement title. What will be the title of your the Swagger page? The title will be Code Decode APIs. Then description will be APIs created by Code Decode, suppose. And this is just version 1. And let's build it. So this is all the basic information that you will see on the top page of your Swagger UI. You have defined which group does your APIs belong, what all these APIs belongs to whom, your license and everything is decided. Now next is select. With this select, you, you have API selector builder and then you select this particular configuration that you have done with this select and you can build your Swagger. With this, we have created the basic configuration. Just these many lines of code and your Swagger implementation is done. We'll just go ahead and run our application. This is started at port number 8080 and now I want to hit my get all employees. The URL we already have that is slash code slash all slash code slash all and let's try to hit it great we have two employees with us that is one is code and second is decode so our api is working perfectly fine but with this implementation of swagger i must have this particular apis being documented existing apis being, docu being documented in swagger ui let's go to localhost 8080 and swagger ui html and great, I can see my employee controller here and get, delete, post, update, everything is here. So if you can go and see our controller, we should have add employee method. This is add employee method, which is of type post with the slash code slash save. So we have slash code slash save and this is documented. Get all employees, we have get all employees. Then get employee by ID, we have get employee by ID also. Delete and update. So this is update and this is delete. So we have all the five APIs implemented in Swagger UI. Just with three, two simple things. By adding the pom.xml with Swagger 2 and Swagger UI. And with this configuration class, we are able to make the existing APIs documented in Swagger UI. Here you have implemented your title and your description with a version. Where is it? So this is your code decode APIs. This is your title of the Swagger API. Then description is API created by code decode. Here you will see the description. And this is version 1. So if you can see API version 1. And the group name where do you see all your groups? Your groups will be seen here. Public APIs is your group name. So this is the public APIs where you can see your group names. If you have multiple group names, you can see multiple group names as a drop down in this Swagger. Great, you have implemented all the basic things of your Swagger. Let's quickly go ahead and see this one weird basic error controller available here. Why is this basic controller is also implemented here? Because the basic error controller is also a controller. Basic error controller is also a controller added in the Spring Boot jar itself. So that is why it is by default automatically implemented. Now you have to make some configurations 
so that this basic error controller can be ignored. So the basic implementation will also go here. After you have selected APIs, you have to show where your APIs to be fetched. Now suppose I say APIs to be fetched from the base package here. With this implementation, your basic error controller should go. So let's run it again. Since this is a configuration class, you have to restart even though if you have implemented auto build, but you have to restart your code to see the changes and see the basic controller is gone. Only the employee controller is left. So this is one of the way to scan the base package where you want to fetch all the controllers. But I would still suggest rather than using this, there is one more way to fetch the only REST API controllers. Because basic error controller is a controller, we just need only REST controllers with the APIs. You say you should have your class annotated with REST controller. This will have the same impact as the upper but this is a beautiful way of not doing the base packages because your controller might be in different package also. So that will be ignored in the Swagger implementation. So rather the elegant way of finding your classes is through REST controller dot class. Any class annotated with REST controller will be implemented in your Swagger implementation. Let's run and see the basic error controller doesn't come again. No, it doesn't. So it's the same impact, but a beautiful and elegant way of implementing it. The Swagger UI. This is the Swagger UI. So what is Swagger UI? It allows developers, the front-end team, like other microservice users, are going to call your REST API for some data and functionality to visualize, interact with API resource without having to know the implementation logic in place. So with this API, you can play it, you can try it, try it. So it can say that you are going to hit this curl API, you're going to hit with localhost 8080, it is going to accept all kind of headers and your response which comes is one code and two as decode. Isn't this very same as one as code and two as decode in the postman? So doesn't this seem to be similar to postman? Here you have request URL, you have headers also, you have response also, you have response code also and this is your response headers also. So this is how you can visualize and interact with API resources without knowing the logic inside it. This is how you create the abstraction. Again just for the summary purpose, enable swagger, enable springfox swagger 2. The docket is primary configuration class to initialize swagger specification 2.0. Group name helps you configure the subset of services to be documented and group them by name. Example, you can say some of these APIs, this 5 API is a public API. This one API is for me, that is private API. Some are business specific APIs and some are admin specific APIs. So that managing these APIs in groups is much more easier. This app info method is going to return you the app information with a builder, which is going to build the information of the Swagger page like your title which is here, your description which is here, your version which is here and license and many more things which will be the top of the page. Then the select returns the instance of select builder which is going to give you the control over the endpoints exposed via Swagger. So here we have taken the advantage of what endpoints to be exposed with the Swagger. Only the class which is annotated with race controller or only the classes which is inside this controller package to be exposed in the Swagger implementation. That's the thing which is done by this select endpoint. Now just to summarize what we have done is we have added a dependency in pom.xml for the Swagger 2 and Swagger Swagger UI. Secondly, we have added the Swagger configuration with a new docket being created. Without docket, your Swagger will not be implemented with the group name and API information. And when you select it, this select method gives you what to show in the Swagger implementation. So what do you want to show is with the either you give the base package or you give the class annotation which you want to show in the documentation. Now then you hit this particular URL and you can see everything in the Swagger UI. But you also see a Swagger error controller. Now the way to solve the issue of basic error controller is you can either use the base package or you can use the class annotation but this is much more elegant solution. The basic error controller annotated with at the rate controller only that is why the, it's not at the rate trace controller that is why a Swagger would avoid this in the definition file. That was all about Swagger. If you want me to continue with such kind of scenario based practical questions on REST API you have to let me know in the comment section. I'll create the second part of this particular REST API interview questions. Thank you.